Sustainability in astronomy, friends, astronomers for planet Earth, folks, and everybody interested in saving the Earth. As you see, there's a whiteboard behind me with the, the sun there, so some kind of astronomy. Uh, I didn't plan that. I just saw it. I'm in a library uh, conference room, actually. Um, so I've not done these kinds of pre-recorded videos, um, but this is going to be... So this is the first, and this is a... Uh, short talk uh, because mostly it's an advertisement for a paper as you will see so I will go through the, the slides as they are um, okay so if we look at slide number one <clears throat> I'm giving this on behalf of everyone on this document so the title is sustainability in high energy physics cosmology and astroparticle physics because those are kind of the domains of astrophysics that we uh, that we there was a subset of us yeah, working on this paper that were from those areas specifically the most which kind of you know bleed into high energy physics the most as well in some in certain ways <clears throat> my background is actually as a particle physicist i got my uh, doctorate on babar at slack it was a matter antimatter experiment for those who, who don't know it um and then I moved into cosmology, observational cosmology. Now I work on gravitational wave optical follow-up uh, with the with the um, Blanco telescope down in Chile currently. So uh, I work for Fermilab now, uh, but mostly I've been at, at Stanford till recently. Uh, uh, that's, that's my Stanford address. All right, so let's go on to slide two. So there's two quotes here. There's Brother Carl, as I like to always call him, who meant so much to so many of us and inspired many of us, those who grew up in the 80s and 90s and, and watched uh, the original Cosmos. <clears throat> and he said, we're putting out huge quantities of CO2 and other gases without being concerned about the consequences. So people have known about climate change for a very long time. And, you know, there are, there's scientific evidence uh, concern back in the 1800s there were already articles because people knew uh, that co2 traps ir infrared um, radiation so uh, has a lot of uh, absorption bands in the, in uh, the ir um, and then there's the ipcc which many people know is you know the authorities on these things and they said in 2021 it's unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere and everywhere else on the planet we're already affecting many weather and uh, many weather systems and climate extremes. It's very clear to everybody, as I say, it's either too hot or too cold, or weird things are happening, or disasters are happening. Uh, the the up and downness is getting extreme, and mostly really too hot at times in the summer, as everyone has has seen um, and experienced very directly. Uh, I don't need to preach to the choir here. Uh, we all know this uh, generally. Okay, then the IPCC says on slide three, the the surface temperature will continue to rise until mid-century, uh, under all emission scenarios considered, uh, unless deep reductions in CO two and other uh, emissions like uh, methane occur in the coming decades, um, and even then it, well, there's various scenarios. It just depends on which one we end up in, and we're not doing super now, although we're not the worst either governments around the world have started uh, taking some action and individuals <clears throat> okay so as a global community of scientists and, and citizens we have a moral moral and pragmatic obligations to act um, so you all have seen this going to slide five you all have seen lots of these kinds of plots of where do the emissions occur by sector uh, so if we go to slide six it it's that same pie chart with where they kind of come from. So uh, we have energy broadly construed uh, is 73%. Um, and so that's, you know, mostly burning fossil fuels, etc. So there's food and waste and energy, technology, computing, and travel. We all sort of know these, and, and our paper kind of talks about these. 
uh, all in these categories. If we go to slide seven, <clears throat> this, this we, we've called the, our paper, by the way, a white paper. I was sort of for calling it a green paper because it's a bit different, um, and I just prefer that terminology, but uh, there it is. So what this plot is about is the kind of inequities in uh, what we what we what we do um, so what we're showing is that the top mm, the top one percent and the top yeah very one percent already account for what is it fifteen percent of all emissions and the, the top ten percent which generally all of us in or scientists fall into um, that accounts for fifty two percent of all emissions in, in some way. And we've seen these kinds of numbers and this is, you know, an average over uh, Europe and, and the US and all that. I believe this is an average over all of these. Um, the US being much more unequal uh, socioeconomically than most of Europe, uh, but still it's, it's an average. And then the poorest 50% account for 7% of, uh, of emissions. Um, actually, so let me take this. So this applies to the whole world. So this is the, yeah, the, the richest 1% of all income earners in the whole world and the lowest, uh, yeah, all those categories. So this is the whole world. So it's not just uh, Europe and the US. Um, so this data is from Oxfam. Okay. So this shows that the burden falls on those who are wealthier on the whole, uh, more socioeconomically advantaged, right? All right, so now we go uh, on slide eight to what those of us who are scientists contribute extra in addition to sort of our normal life. So uh, the top bar is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> for somebody who works at CERN, they've done this analysis. So there's scope one, two, and three. One is is direct. If you're breathing CO2 or your experiment is giving off CO2 or other gases that are called, they're called F gases uh, in high energy physics, they are like insulation gases. Uh, um, I don't know if they're chlorofluorocarbon CFCs, but they're gases that have much more uh, heat trapping effect, just like methane is a more powerful uh, greenhouse gas than CO2. Uh, sulfur hexafluoride is one that we use for certain things that sticks in my mind. So anyway, that's direct. Scope two is if we're producing electricity for the site, uh, how much of a contribution is that? And then there's all the other stuff that we use to live. So there's business travel, commuting, uh, food, computers, waste treatment. So this would be food in we need to normally eat food, but this would be food in canteens or cafeterias on site, right? And so that's something that's very directly in our control. And sorry, the P is erased here, but the, the per capita budget to 2050 is shown below. And that's what we have to keep if we wanted to keep the earth from, you know, go undergoing tipping points and that kind of thing that, that are talked about. Um, and by the way, so that that uh, eight, nine tons of uh, tons of CO2 equivalent per researcher, that's to be compared with, it's something like six to 12 per person just normally living in, in Europe. I, I remember that being kind of the number. So it's roughly doubling that or, or more. Um, okay, so how do we, uh, how do we reduce that? Well, okay, let's look step back and what were the origins of our sustainability document or green paper there was a workshop just like a 4 has had workshops there was a sustainable high energy physics hep workshop back in june 2021 uh, where people just said these issues matter we can't keep doing our research without being uh, concerned about these things so the aim was to state our concerns as a group of physicists uh, to build upon the existing work to reflect upon what we could do as a community and to care about these issues about sustainability and social justice. Okay, so on slide 10, there's <clears throat> a timeline for kind of what we did. So we decided to write this green paper back in 2021. That was one of our, you know, one of the things coming out of that first conference. So we got together, we were had meetings, you know, every other week roughly. 
uh, I did some of the writing, other people did more of the writing, and we put together this, what I consider a really nice document, uh, roughly sometime by the summer. And then we had another workshop on in early September, the second workshop. And uh, so by this point, we now have a fairly stable draft um, that we've gotten a lot of feedback from. And, oh, it's a second version uploaded today, so that means a while ago. And uh, we do need more community contributions, so if there are any of you who would like to join this, you are certainly welcome. Uh, you can mail me or go to the website, or I can tell you about when the next meetings are, um, and, and you're welcome to join this effort. Uh, we plan to release this for endorsement by all the communities, astronomers, physicists, whoever is in physical, you know, in these domains. Um, and then we plan to put it on the archive and let people, people at it. And of course, there's, you know, going to be pushback. For example, some people don't like when we say there should be less travel for uh, academic purposes. Um, on the whole, we say that. It depends, and, you know in certain situations, but if we can do things remotely just as well or better at times, um, like this whole conference is, then let's do that, right? Um, so if we go to uh, slide 11, uh, this is Sir David Attenborough's quote, and this really reminds me um, of just really moving quotes that we've heard in the past. Um, the truth is the natural world is changing. We are totally dependent on that world. It provides our food, water, and air. The mo it is the most precious thing we have, and we need to defend it, right? Ways to connect, email us. We have a Mattermost. We, instead of Slack, we use Mattermost. Um, we're around this meant during that eight, uh, the other workshop that we had, but I'll be around during this uh, workshop, uh, and I'm definitely on Slack, the FRE Slack. Um, and this is the website. I might have given it to start too, but this is the website you can get the paper from. So it's on GitHub, and it's a it's the current version of the paper, okay? Um, and so just to slide 13, the first workshop, the second workshop, they're both on Indigo. You can actually watch, I believe, all the talks uh, there. Certainly you can get a lot of the material if you go to these links. Um, and see what was happening in the workshop. And then there are some references. Um, okay, just going to the paper, I wanted to say uh, briefly on it. It's a fairly long paper right now, what is it? It's close to 100 pages. But what I really like is the executive summary. It's less than two pages. Uh, it gives you the, the heart of what we uh, have tried to get across. So we have a cover page. The title is Striving Towards en Environmental Sustainability in HEP, Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics. We've called that ECAP for now. Um, and then we have that statement of intent on that first page. And we're saying that we really would like to continue to get input and feedback. And then if you go, we, we have a for forward from uh, right now, Dr. Beata Heinemann, the director of uh, DAISY. And we are planning to get other forwards from other lab directors. Uh, and then you go to the executive summary and, you know, it gives you the general intro and then specific actions. You know, to me, it's about your diet, driving, flying less, and then other things in a smaller way. Diet is something we can very much control. Cafeterias and canteens, we can try to push them to go towards greener and more sustainable food sources. And food offerings and we can drive electric cars we can put solar panels up there's individual things and there's institutional things which we have a little more a little bit of control over than governmental things and you know I, I'm gonna say this sometimes people get really down about climate change I've been there and I don't get to that place now because I've been in those dark periods and to me I have a three-year-old daughter it's just about how do we um, make it so we have the least bad future how we have the best possible or the least bad future. It's incumbent upon all of us as human beings who have this information to work on that. And it's incumbent upon us, especially as particle physicists, astrophysicists, astronomers, 
to who have more power, more disposable income, who know more, who know the scientific facts and can understand them more easily, to do what we can. I um, that's what I would say. I, I'm not going to become a climate scientist myself. I really honor those people who leave the field and go and do that. Uh, but I will continue to do what I can within the field and in other areas of my life to uh, to help that to make the least bad future. Um, I'm more optimistic than that at times, <laughs> and and less so at times. So I think with that, I'm going to uh, to end it. And uh, thanks so much for your attention. Happy to take questions during the discussion periods. Peace. Thank you.